have us going on the air? Yeah, we're live. Okay, great. We're live. And then I would like to call this meeting of the way to select board to order, please. Um, the first order of business is uh, the review and perhaps approve the minutes from the October 11th meeting. Uh, are there any comments on the minutes? Not for me. Okay. We'll approve the minutes. Second. Uh, those in favor? Aye. Yep. Aye. Okay. <laughs> that was fast. No was roll call. Yeah. Um, the uh, payroll and vendor warrants were uh, in there and signed. Are there any comments on those? No. 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 Okay. All right. Well, excuse me. Now it's public comment time. Time to listen to comments from the public related to items not listed on the agenda. So uh, anybody out there? I see a few faces who are could be members of the public or could be here on business. Anybody have anything they want to say? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands up on the Zoom screen. There's nobody in the audience here. So I'll uh, go past public comment. Um, we've got scheduled appointments, which we're running a little bit ahead, but everyone is here. So I don't see a reason to, to uh, delay. We've got, um, is it, it's Zara Dowling, right? Uh, from the UMass Clean Energy Center and Paul Newland from the Energy Committee. I also see Nat Fortune from the Energy Committee here. Uh, they want to talk about an opportunity to partner with UMass Clean Energy Center to develop a community solar action plan for the town. So should I turn it over to Zara then? Yes. Sure, sounds good. Hi, hi all. And uh, just so you know, we often get confused with the Mass Clean Energy Center but mm -hmm. I'm actually here from UMass Clean Energy Extension, but we people often get the two names confused. Oh. So the Mass Clean Energy Center is out in Boston. UMass yeah. Clean Energy Extension, UMass, yeah. as you might uh, imagine, is at UMass Amherst. Yes, yeah, yes, we um, have a, a creative yeah. mixture of those two names yeah. on our agenda. Yeah, 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 no, no, and that's fine. I, like I said, it, it's a very common thing because they're very similar names. Um, so, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, so my name's Zara. I'm a, a research fellow at the Clean Energy Extension at UMass. And um, we started a project a few years ago with some federal funding to put together a so kind of solar planning toolkit for towns. Um, we just had seen that there was a lot of uh, controversy in some cases or conflicts where towns, you know, were just sort of in this defensive position where large solar developers were coming in and you know, trying to develop projects. And in some cases there was conflict. And so we thought, well, wouldn't it make sense to kind of put towns in a proactive position uh, where they could say, how much solar do we want? Where do we want it? You know, where do we want it on municipal land? Um, you know, what kinds of private properties are people having solar, interested in having solar on? Um, and so basically we got this federal funding and went through this whole process of developing a toolkit and a process to, you um, Go kind of have the town look at what what the possibilities are, and then have a solar survey out to the community to understand what people want. And coming out of that, to kind of have an action plan to say, what do we need to do to make that happen? Um, so we wrapped up creating the toolkit uh, earlier this year, and this fall we're working with a class of students um, to have them kind of walk through that process and provide a lot of the. Kind of like legwork on the ground, I would say, but I guess a lot of it's computer based um, to help towns through that process. So, uh, wait. The reason that I had heard from Paul um, about an interest in Waitley participating, and when I heard from him, we actually weren't sure if we were going to be able to have room with the number of students that we had and the number of towns that we had um, to include Waitley. But then other one other town had to drop out. So. That's why I kind of had gotten back in touch with Paul and um, with your town administrator a little bit late in the game <laughs> to to kind of say, well, we do have a students available and uh, they'd be interested to participate. So sorry, that's a little bit of a mouthful, but <laughs> hopefully that kind of gives you the the general perspective. Okay, that I mean, it sounds like it's it's like it's planning and it's information that might be useful. Um, how much of, of, say, our town office staff time would be involved in that? Yeah, so I, I provided a scope of work, um, which I don't know if you guys had a chance to take a look at. <laughs> I guess Paul's holding it up to the camera. 
Um, I think the town administrator had a chance to take a look at it, but uh, the way we see it, the majority of the work would be done by um, the students with some help from the solar planning committee, which could be uh, and the energy committee in this case, it sounds like it probably would be the energy committee. Um, basically, you know, meeting once a month, which they probably are doing anyway, if it's an existing committee, re reviewing any interim documents that uh, the students have provided, providing feedback, that kind of thing. Um, and then we'd ask that somebody who I, I think might, would be Paul would serve as a liaison to between the town and the student if they had any kind of small questions in between monthly meetings. So there wouldn't be a lot of requirements on the um, staff side. We do okay. ask initially, yeah, sorry, just if if you scroll down a little bit, um, we do ask initially for some copies of different plans that the town has, um, as well as access to Mass Energy Insight, just to so we can kind of give you a sense of how much energy you're using versus how much solar you would need to cover that. Um, but I think we have a lot of the, a lot of the plans we were able to find on your website or on state websites. So I don't think there'd be a lot of work to get those bylaws or plans. It's just if they weren't available online already. Um, so it would really, I guess it would be MEI access. Um, okay. Primarily. Yeah. So not a lot of time. Yeah, that, that was kind of one of my main thing is that, that if we sign up for this, I don't know what you're committing, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know yeah. you guys are pretty busy Fun with it. It doesn't sound like very much. Like there may be occasional questions. There may be occasional requests for a document. Um, but exactly. it doesn't sound like a huge administrative burden. Exactly. Like the energy committee. Right, the energy committee may want to weigh in on this. The energy committee is <laughs> then. <laughs> Well, I'd, I'd be happy to weigh in on this from my perspective, which is <clears throat> I sort of got ourselves into this uh, and uh, I'd be happy to be the liaison and do whatever legwork is needed to assist in the development of the survey and the action plan. Uh, but I'm, I'm seeing from the scope of work that a lot of our work, if Nad chose to join me in this, would just be reviewing what the students come up with, primarily and giving them some feedback as we feel is necessary. The idea of having a meeting of the Energy Committee once a month is a novel notion, uh, but I suppose uh, that, that could happen. Uh, we've been a little lax on you know, being an active committee, but this gives us some more raison d'etre, so to speak. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I asked Nat for his response, but that's that's my take on it. Oh, is it my turn? Hi, this is Nat Fortune, <clears throat> Westbrook Road. Um, I think the committee itself is a little smaller than uh, you're envisioning, particularly if we're going to have some diverse perspectives on the committee, mm -hmm. states up on the top. So I think there would have to be a plan to recruit people either to the energy committee or to comprising this new committee that would have two members or three from the energy committee, but not be entirely it. Um, I'm not sure what the, the feedback is, if it's asking what the town is thinking, you know, for example, then somehow this committee would have to be able to figure that out. Um, and so I'm not quite sure what, what the committee's tasks are, and that might make it a little hard to recruit people uh, to it. So maybe you could elaborate on the kinds of uh, feedback that's needed or the kind of information the committee needs to have in order to be a good partner on this. Yeah, I can speak to that a little bit. So the first semester, what the students are looking to produce by the end of the first semester, which for them is kind of early to mid-December, is the solar resource and infrastructure assessment. And you can find, we have examples of those on our website if you want to take a look at them. But basically, the first step is just to say, what is possible in town? And that's community-wide. It's not just, it's town buildings and town properties, but also kind of community-wide 
residential rooftops, um, you know, business parking lots, if you, which you may or may not have very many of, but kind of looking across the whole town and doing this desktop analysis um, to understand what's there. And so I think with that document, the main feedback would be, um, you know, this is sort of a desktop analysis based on a lot on what we can find in existing databases and using GIS to do mapping. Um, so there might be some things that we can't get for mapping, like if you know of an old municipal landfill or an other disturbed site that we might want to think about in that category for solar, you know, we just ask you if you knew of any of those kind of things. Um, or there might be things that just we get wrong because there's something that's in a database but no longer exists in reality in the town. So a little bit of it would just be a reality check on that first document. Um, and then just making sure that it's understandable. Like, you know, this is the first time that we're teaching this class. The students are students. And so, you know, they're gonna do a great job and they're gonna do a lot of peer review and work with us to make sure that it's a clear document. But, you know, it's sort of also just to make sure that someone, a townsperson can understand what, what's trying to be conveyed. Uh, in that report. So that's the first step. I think with the, the solar survey, we have a template survey. So, you know, if there wasn't feedback from you, we just would update those numbers for Waitley and um, go forward with that. But there might be specific questions that you want to ask uh, town residents about solar um, that we could add to that. And then, you know, if you have thoughts about the distribution plan, that's number five. Um, you know, like we we're planning to do that distribution and we have some ways that we've done it in the towns that we've worked with so far, but you might say, oh, you know, there's this town event that happens every year. Um, and that would be a great place to have a student sit and distribute the survey or, you know, where town meeting is this day and maybe you want to get it out there as well. Although I guess we're planning to distribute it earlier in the year, but um that's, I don't know if that answers your questions, but that's the kind of thing we'd be looking for in terms of feedback, I guess, sort of just a, a reality check from the town perspective, making sure that things make sense and, you know, extra feedback on things that you happen to know are happening in town or you think the town cares about that we should make sure we include. I, I guess in that case, I would think I would want there to be a special person, ad hoc committee invite people to uh, participate and attend through the town scoop newsletter and things like that the website mm -hmm. and and simply have representation from like paul and the energy committee and other members uh, as part of that um, mm -hmm. rather yeah. than be subsumed on it because i think that otherwise the committee would be a little small and not broad enough to be sure to catch everything that you need um, yeah, I think that's reasonable. We've had kind of a mix of some towns, the energy committee has just taken it on if they're pretty large and active and other towns um, they set up an ad hoc committee for a year to oversee this process. Um, like I know in, um, in Colerain, uh, I think two or three members of the planning board said they'd form the core, but then they were kind of what you said, they recruited, they're in the process actually of <laughs> still finalizing, but they're recruiting other members. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, it sounds like the energy committee would like some more people. Yeah. So we have to think about. I've asked a couple people about being on the energy committee, and nobody I've asked so far has been willing to, to put in the time to do that. So it might be, it might be up to us to find. Like, is there, is there, like, who do we talk? Like somebody who, I mean, we have people already who know a lot about solar energy and about solar systems. We don't have somebody who knows like every nook and cranny of this town and where would be, uh, like where are some, where are, like which sites are, like when, when we try to evaluate information, somebody who knows the land of the town better might be a really good person to look at these and, and ask yeah, better mm -hmm. critical Keith, questions. Keith has enough on his plate. Keith, like yeah, Keith has <laughs> enough on his plate right now. Um, but uh, anyway, let's keep that in the back of our minds yeah. um, as we go. Now, is this something where we need to um, to take a vote? On, I'm going to the agenda okay. again here. Um, it says here, um, discuss an opportunity, it doesn't, 
say vote on here, but it sounds like Brian's head is moving in such a way that I think he wants us to yeah. vote to participate. I think we should. That way we can. Yeah. I don't object to making a vote to this um, What do you, are you any other things you want to? Um, I had a quick question. I'm sorry. No. Uh, Zara, is this primarily about looking for places to uh, place solar panels and solar um, arrays, or is this about how to get everybody in the town or as many people in the town using solar energy through one source or another, or? Uh, it's I would say it's it's partly the first um, okay. but it's also just trying to it's not it's not trying to actively promote solar so it's trying to say what are the town's options and then what do people want um, yeah. so yeah. one of the things that we ask in the survey is sort of some different options you know where things can be kind of like the status quo or do people in the town want to work towards developing previously disturbed spaces and and sites for solar or does the town want to set a goal of um or you know do community residents want the town to set a goal of kind of community self-sufficiency or contributing to regional goals for western mass or state goals so that's one of the questions we ask in the survey and then we kind of shape the actions around what people mm -hmm. want so if people are like we really would like to see more municipal solar like solar on municipal buildings then that eventual action plan will include actions that would say, okay, here's how to go about this. And I know you guys have already done work in that area. If if people say, hey, we really like residential solar and we'd like to see residential, more residential solar on residential roofs, then we talk about actions that would lead to making that happen, okay. um, if that makes sense. So definitely locations, but also, yeah, a little bit broader than that. And so it could also be, what locations do we not want? A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, for example, one of the uh, towns we worked with initially was Wendell, which has a very strong kind of, I guess, love of their forests, uh, you would say. And I'm sure in Waitley, there's probably also, you know, there's a lot of agricultural land that people might be interested in protecting at least some of. Um, there's also a lot of forests as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah and forests. Yeah. And so uh Wendell had a really strong bylaw in terms of protecting forest but um you know one minor thing that it didn't talk about was a look back period where so th they were very strict about cutting trees to put in solar um but they didn't have any look back period so it was basically like if someone cut trees in the next year they sold it to a solar developer they leased it to a solar developer um you know and it wasn't part of the development it wouldn't be uh yeah. like it wouldn't be subject to that restriction so you know that was kind of we pointed that out as like oh you might want to update your bylaw in this way um yeah. Yeah. to kind of make it a little stricter so yeah it's a hundred percent where do you want solar and then where do you not want solar um and one thing that we've included in that um is one thing that kind of plays a lot into uh where big large-scale solar development can occur is the grid infrastructure and so we've been working with um, kind of up towards my area, which is the northwest corner of the Quab, and to say, with the local land trust to say, okay, what are the properties that really would be valuable for conservation that might be subject to solar development because where they occur along the grid? Um, so th that there might be areas that you'd say, oh, this is a priority to conserve because it has, you know, high conservation or recreation value. Um, and it could be at risk from solar development because it's along these three phase lines where solar development could occur on a large scale. So maybe that's a priority for conserving over a spot that's not going to be at risk of development, you know, imminently. Okay. Wow. A lot involved. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like free, free, free data. Free data. Right. Free data. Yeah, free information. And some of it's going to be opinions, yeah. right? It's going to be what people feel and what they want. Yeah. But I think that's that's good information, right? Fred, did you have something to say? No, I just free, free except for whatever time. Yeah, except the energy time. committee. Has, yeah, or whatever committee puts into it. Okay. All right. Well, I would move that we approve the opportunity to partner with the UMass Clean Energy Extension. Second that. <laughs> okay. Great. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great.
thank you very much. Thank you very much. And and uh, and explaining everything. With with the understanding, we'll work with the energy committee to try to. We yeah we yeah the, the, round up some additional. We got to round up some some uh, some people power there. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank you so much. Great to thank meet you. Thank you, Sarah, and okay. thank you, board. Appreciate it. And <laughs> I Paul. will be and in I... touch about our next meeting. <laughs> okay. And our recruitment strategy. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So next is on to COVID-19. I don't see anything on the agenda, nor do I see anything in the meeting materials. Um, does that mean there's no updates? Okay. All right. Well, then we are on to old business. Uh, your old business, the first item is discuss additional funding needed for a new police cruiser. Um, so I get we've all seen the very uh, calculations about savings, and it looks like on uh, five years, there's a substantial savings if we were to put an extra roughly $8,000 in up front and delay the cruiser for one year, the new purchase. Um, so that's kind of updated information that we have. Um, my understanding is if we decide to go that way, then uh, the next decision would be, do we appropriate that money in a special town meeting coming up like in a month or two, or do we wait until April for regular town meeting? Um, it won't matter very much because we've appropriated it enough, I think, to get on the list. Um, and we won't need to pay for it until maybe this time next year, something like that. Um, I don't know what the pros and cons are necessarily. At a big town meeting, you've got more people. At a special town meeting, you're sort of getting last year's business done and out of the way. And so I can see some advantages in that. So I, I don't feel strongly uh, one way or the other, but I guess that would be jumping the the gun perhaps to, we have really decided which way to go. Um, so that's kind of, what, that's my summary of kind of where we are at the moment. Um, and I see Jim is here and should give him an opportunity to uh, Well, so I, have just, I think the logical place to take the money from is from the same vehicle fund that the initial 55,000 came out of that fire. I think the finance committee should be yeah, whenever the we'll next meeting should consider that. Yeah. But I think that that's the logical place it would come from. Oh. That you know, rather, yeah. rather than have uh, appropriated 55,000, know, add another seven from that fund, yeah. which, which has has resources to cover it. And that's the purpose of the And that's the purpose of the fund. Yeah. Um, Jim. Uh, good evening. <laughs> I, th I think you I think you all have pretty much covered what I was going to say just the the savings there it, it made more sense to uh, to look at those long term savings um, and try to come up with that additional money there's there is plenty of money in the vehicle vehicle stabilization account to cover that additional seventy eight hundred and sixty nine dollars um, I have already gotten on the list I've already kind of preliminarily um, ordered the cruiser just so we can kind of reserve that that spot um, still being told up to up to a year before we could get it unless something miraculous happens and then come April they say hey we got a bunch of cars now we have to maybe figure out what to do at that time uh, but the best best guess with the information I have now is we would probably be looking at having to uh, to spend the money after after July first of next year, so um, yeah. I don't think there's much more that I that I have to offer other than um, just the numbers that I provided to you, and that the hybrid going forward, the hybrid makes more sense than uh, purchasing a gas gas cruiser at this point. There's there may be additional cost um, for maintenance on the cruiser because it's out of warranty and there's nothing major right now that's pending but um yeah. even with with those costs i think i still think we're we're going to be looking at substantial savings over the uh, the life of a hybrid so 
I, I was going to ask if there are any problems with extent with pushing the life of the existing current vehicles out for another year. No, it's it's something that that we've done in the past, and I think with the finance committee and the select board, I think just acknowledging that um, at this point the additional costs would have to be covered by the town, and it and it may it may be something that's that's not able to be covered within my budget um, if it's you know some major expense we may have to raise a little bit more money to to, to offset that. But um, other than that, I don't I don't see any reason. Yeah, yeah. Extending the life for one year is one thing. Asking to extend it three years or something right. is quite a different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, And yeah, I mean, you have if if we were ever to get on a a regular rotation without because it seems like every time we get a cruiser, there's there's some issue with getting pushed off or the funding or whatever it might be, but. Um, We've, we've taken the last couple of cars we've taken off of the front line as when I when I talk about the front line, I mean the, the cruiser that's out there every day patrolling, we take it off the front line and we use that car as a, you know, as a detail car, you know, for doing traffic right. or traffic detail out on yeah. the road or something like that, or taking it to training or, you know, putting the, the additional mileage on that, um, you know, the extending the life of a cruiser, you know, shortens the the life that we may be able to, to get out of it as a detail car as well. So just just another a point, but I don't think that's a major a major factor in, in this decision. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for putting together all the figures. It's yes. Very, it's very clear. That was very nice. Yeah. You taking the time. My, my apologies for <laughs> inverting those uh, the percentages. So yeah. hopefully. It, Hopefully it's clear. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out, Fred. <clears throat> okay, well, um, Brian, do you have an, any opinion on whether it's, I mean, if somebody comes from vehicle stabilization, plans to meet, would have to meet, would they have to meet anyway before a special town meeting? Um, I mean, I guess, you know, we can just get it done now. I sort of feel like let's just get it done now, and uh, and the you know the issue is over with, and then that's one less thing on the long town meeting in April. Mm -hmm. um, and as a fallback, if it's not authorized by special town meeting, we can always go into CLFRF money, which we can authorize. That's right to cover. We can. Right. Um, but I don't see why anybody would. I, I don't. I don't see why either. But just. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so when you say get it done now, you mean get, get it the, at the take it to special take meeting. it to the special time meeting that yeah. we're going to have anyway at yeah. the end of November ish or maybe right. beginning of November ish, but it, we're we're going to have one anyway. Right. Uh, the finance committee has to meet anyway, and putting this one issue uh, ahead means there's one less thing to yeah. fall between the cracks in April. So. Right. Kind of like you know, if you can do schedule something sooner, something happens. Yeah, you can do it later, but right. yeah. you can't make it sooner if you schedule it for later, right? You have to do the reverse. Yeah. Um, so that's anyways. That's my opinion. Um, we should. You probably would like a vote on this. Um, and a motion. But could I just ask one question? Yeah. As far as funding goes, um, if if we. The money is appropriated now for this fiscal year. If we raise additional funding in this fiscal year to be spent next fiscal year, how does how does that work? Would that would that amount just automatically carry over? Would that have to be encumbered? How how would we process that on the back end? Uh, special warrant articles will will carry over fiscal year okay. fiscal year. <clears throat> Um, okay. Yeah, I'm, it would be good. I guess it would be good to have a motion and a vote, and then okay. I can bring that to the finance committee and then okay. special town get it on the special town meeting form. All right. Okay. Well, let, let me give a try on a motion. Uh, I move that we <laughs> uh, take the, whatever necessary actions to appropriate a sum of, what was it, $8,000? It was seven thousand something and seven hundred and sixty nine. Seven eight six nine. Seven eight six nine dollars at the special town meeting from 
uh, and recommend that it comes from vehicle stabilization. Yes. Uh, this is, of course, pending the Finance Committee's agreement um, and try to do that at the special town meeting. I'll second that. Well, I'm just add to cover the purchase of the high. Oh, cruiser. sorry, to cover the purchase of the, <laughs> uh, the increased cost of the high right. cruiser in the next uh, year. Yeah. Okay. No second. No second. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a motion made and seconded. Up. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Great. I'm Thank sorry. You. Can I can I ask one more question? Sure. Um, as far as the finance committee goes, is there is there a way we could um, add a note that moving forward with this, that by the time a special meeting, special town meeting rolls around, there may no longer be any gas cruisers left um, because those are those are going. That was the other option that we had. So it's either the hybrid or it may be nothing else. There may no, be no other option. So just just a note to the finance okay. committee. By the time that comes up, that may yeah. not. Okay. Up. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, very good then. We're on to part B of all business. Uh, to review, discuss, and vote to issue a request for proposal for the redevelopment and long term lease of the Whitley Center School. So let's just open that up to uh, comments. I assume that, Fred, you will probably have some comments on that. Uh, invitation to fill in. Okay, yeah. Quick summary. What do you want to jump into? Um, or yeah, why don't, why don't you? Um, yeah, just just I guess for a summary, it's you know the the select board as it's written, the select board would be looking to um offer the center school under a long term lease arrangement. Um, the expectations of the lessee would be that the lessee would uh, make improvements to the school. Um, and in return, it would likely be for a reduced rent over the term of the lease. Um, the lease as it's currently written would uh, give the town control over sort of what happens with the building. Um, as it's written currently, it would be with the exterior and interior of the building. Um, and in terms of, so that's physical improvements to the building. In terms of use, um, the proposal really defers to the zoning bylaw. So in terms of either the, um, I think the, the schools in the AR1 district or the, uh, the preservation reuse bylaw that was adopted by the town two or three years ago, maybe even four. Um, yeah. And it provides some flexibility um, in terms of the use of the building and um, the, the physical requirements in terms of parking and setbacks and frontage, because otherwise the building, you know, the lot yeah. itself is is substandard as to what would be required in the, the AR1 of the Office of Protection Overlay District. And then in terms of parking, um, my understanding would be if we were to try to meet the parking requirements of some of the yeah. uses that 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 might happen in the building, the parking lot would be unlocked, you know, the parking lot would get a lot bigger and would lose the green space. Yeah. Um, but really it's just seeing if there's a long-term uh, lessee that's interested in you know, preserving and maintaining and using the building for a term of years that they would suggest and on a rent that they would suggest. And then we would go from there. I think we would put it out. Um, my recommendation would be no sooner than 60 days in terms of requesting responses, because I think we would want to give people time. Even yeah. 60 days may seem like a yeah, like like a too short of a time. Yeah, 60 days is like Christmas. Um right. Uh, yeah, I would, I would say 90 days. Um 90 days. Um, <clears throat> you know, we'll we'll pull the site visit, we'll we'll have We'll make the opportunity for people to come to the building if they want to come back and make an appointment to really get into it. That that would work out as well. Um, town the the board's under no obligation to accept any proposal, um, but we are requesting that that unlike when we put out the 
the um, the RFI, which was uh, not actionable, the proposals that we would receive would be actionable by the time we would, we would expect that the <coughs> the respondents would yeah you know have put a good faith effort into uh, entering into a long term lease and doing something with the building. Um, and if we don't get any proposals or we don't get anything we like, then we're really sitting back here yeah. and having a discussion of the problem. What do we do next? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Without much having changed except the building's three months older. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the summary of how it's right. Yeah. Uh, what, one thing in your note, you mentioned setting up a review committee for proposals. Yeah. Five members. Uh, representative select board, finance committee, zoning board, and historical commission, and one at large. I would like to suggest the at large be as immediate a neighbor of the center school as possible. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, whether someone who lives next door or very close, yeah. because that will be the property impacted by far the most. Yeah. yeah. But, but I think that a five, five person committee. Is good. You get much bigger than that, and it yeah. starts getting unwieldy. Where does an RFP like this get posted? Um. So we would advertise. So we would advertise a legal notice in the paper. Mm -hmm. uh, we put it on the website. We put it on uh, social media. Um, we obviously have the notice in, in, in the town. We post it around town where we can. Typically, what we post through the notices, and then after that, it's really how much outreach that we want to do. Okay. Um, There's not like a state clearinghouse or anything. I'm familiar from the old days working in architecture with Central Register. Yeah, um, we could post. I believe we could post it in the Central Register. Um, I believe also. Um, the name of it escapes me right now. Mass, I think it's mass development. I think it's still called mass development. Mm -hmm. It has a database online. Typically, it's for larger redevelopment projects. But mm -hmm. um, I was just curious how broad our reach was going to be. Yeah, and I was wondering about reaching out to. Who's on I was using the best any of the reporters. I maybe thought, just thought Chris Laird be yeah and doing the article on it. I don't know if that um, um, could uh, that could happen. I don't yeah. know. Exclusive access, of course. Yes. <laughs> we can put something in the scoop, of course, but that won't go too far beyond the borders of the town. Okay. And uh, it's it, it's hard to. I, I think yeah. we put it out and we see what happens. Put it out and we get more if, information. If we don't get anything that that it's in the town's best interest, then we can. Reassess how we want to approach the future of the building. Yeah. Do you okay. entertain any motions yet? Um, yeah, or any other comments on the, the actual content of the um, of the article? Uh, I, I thought I thought it was thorough. I thought yeah, I have oh. a couple of very minor points that I brought up with Brian. And, they seem to have been resolved. resolved. Okay. Oh, out of curiosity. One was a question of paying taxes. Uh -huh. And there's a apparently a state law that says that the lessee will pay tax if we don't worry about a payment in lieu of taxes, even though the town still owns the property. Okay. Yeah. And there were a couple of other little wording things. When yeah. It was taken that the word buyer should be replaced by Let's see or something. Like yeah. That. Yeah. So the property would be taxable if it's at least to a taxable entity. Mm -hmm. If it's non profit, if it's a nonprofit, then obviously yeah. Yeah, there's not there's no tax liability for, for the use of the building. Okay. All right. Well, I did the last question. I move we accept the RFP with whatever appropriate times and dates <laughs> inserted. <laughs> okay. All right, I don't know. I don't know if Brian will if uh, Brian will accept that. Let me pull up the uh, well because right now we've got some with right time yeah, it's highlighted. Oh, right, we can enter those. We, yeah, okay, right. And so the uh, we're looking at ninety days. Ninety days. Ninety days from now for that. 
Um, so we are voting to issue to them. Yeah. And so when, when do we want to issue this? Um, I just want to mention Hannah has done some good work on this. It's been a team effort. So um, I'll, why don't we put it out on Halloween? <laughs> we'll just say it's okay. The rest of it. So read it through one more time. It could be on October 31st and we can put any kids trick or treat baskets when they come. Very good. And we'll fill in the other dates based on that. Yeah, yeah that's an issue in state. Okay, I would second that. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Our pee goes out and the water gets turned on. <laughs> ooh, ooh, all on the same day. This is a big day anyway, lady. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I have to show up in costume for those things. All right. Uh, our third item under old business, the last item under old business, is to discuss Hurley Park Restroom Accessibility Project. Did receive the determined next steps. So this part I did not read in, uh, in detail on your email. So I, can you fill us in? Uh, I can. It, it, it'll be pretty brief. Um, <laughs> so we put the project out to bid and we had one bid that exceeded the available funds for the project. Uh -huh. It was somewhere in the vicinity of $94,000 and change oh. for doing the for... three small restrooms. Uh -huh. um, so Ouch. it's very high and I, I, it's not anything that we can accept. Um, um, we did have conversations, I had conversations with Wayne afterwards about um, sort of what, what can we do? Um, and what I would recommend is that, is that we put it out to bid again mm -hmm. um, and try to do a more concerted, we'll, we'll do the advertising that we need to to comply with the law, but to do a, a much more concerted effort, local effort mm -hmm. at, um, contractors, you know, directly send it out to people okay. that we think may be interested. Okay. Um, and then see what happens. Uh, okay. At that point, again, it's it's you know, is there three a, weeks yeah. of waiting? Right. Um, we still have time under the grant. So. Right. Is it when does that grant have to be spent? Um, the end of the fiscal year, so it would be okay. June, June thirtieth. Okay. okay. So sending it out again, you say that's a three week. It would be about three weeks. Yeah. We'll find out. And if, if we're in the same spot again, then we may have to find alternative find so alternatives to do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, does that require a vote? Um, I think it would be good to have a okay. motion. To so we uh, end the project. All right. Now, do we reissue the RFP for the Harley Park Restroom mm -hmm. Accessibility Project? Well, I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. Right. There we go. So on to the business. Um, and here I think Hannah is up to discuss the Municipal Energy Technical Assistance Grant Program. So that's the META and the potential application for assistance. So Hannah, go ahead. Awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> um so the Department of Energy Resources, the same people who do green communities are offering this technical assistance grant. It's for $15,000 um, for technical assistance on a pre-prescribed project that they offer. Um, the list is on pages, it starts on page 46 of the meeting material packet. Um, I am looking for guidance from the select board about whether or not you would like to apply and if you would like to apply or if you would like me to apply. Um, which project uh, is of highest priority for the select board? Yeah. And you or Ryan in the email had pointed out of interest the uh, uh, transitioning a public fleet to electric or hybrid vehicles, which sounds like yeah. yeah. Yep. So on page 50, um, fleet assessment, they offer technical assistance for um, assessing our fleet and transitioning our public fleet to electric and or hybrid vehicles. Um, so they request that our scope of work include things you can see it on the screen, um, yeah. like collecting data, um, 
what kind of infrastructure we'll need to install for the vehicles. Um, it kind of lays a nice groundwork in a way. Um, and I think that the technical assistance will help with the um, depth of knowledge that we need for uh, planning this in a really thoughtful way. Yeah, I think it'd be good because the assistance would be people who have more knowledge of what exists and what is available in terms of yeah. alternative energy vehicles. And, it, yeah. and, it, and it may, uh, I mean, the other thing I like about that is that's something that we're, we're constantly, like every five years for police cruisers, but there's other town vehicles that are uh, coming up and it would be, uh, that I think that would be assistance that would help us for many, many decisions. And we're, yeah, we're also working through that in this time period. Yeah, with, yeah. With all, all of our vehicles trying to find alternatives. Yeah. Yeah, with, with my, my quick run through, the only other thing that caught my eye was the energy resiliency. I was just looking at that too. Um, but I, I, if we, I think if I had to choose between the two, if we, that would be my second choice. Because we're starting to work on the energy resiliency already with this building. We'll certainly learn something from that. Um, but things like the, uh, the, the water pumping for the, for the water system, uh, having that, you know, in the, in, you know, with some kind of a renewable energy type backup, you know, rather than having to buy generators and things like that. I think, I think that's um, uh, like a, a, that's a nice second place, but it, you only apply for one of these, right, Hannah? I believe so, yeah. there It doesn't specifically state that in the um, pond, but it's only $15,000, yeah. and I would imagine that we wouldn't get much technical assistance if we were to uh, try to apply for two. Yeah. yeah. So I, I would think that we'll get a bigger, uh, we'll get more out of it, I think, if we do the vehicle one. I think that was a good catch. Cool. That sounds great. Okay. All right. Do we need, uh, is that, you've gotten then enough feedback from us? Yeah, that's perfect. Um, I'll prepare the application. It's due on the 18th. So um, at the select board meeting preceding that, I will bring the application to you guys for approval and comments. Okay. Um, okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So next item to discuss providing a letter of support for the submission of an efficiency and regionalization grant to support the South County Senior Center. Okay. I'm gonna I can start talking about yeah, it. Yeah, you can start talking about it. Yeah. Where to start is the question. Yes, there we go. Um, so most people know that the South County Senior Center is a regional senior center for Deerfield Weight Gain Center. And for many years, the, the senior center was located, I'm gonna forget the name of the building. Um, it was located in Deerfield. Um, the old, uh, the old the elementary school. school. Okay. Um, you know, adjacent to the town hall, the water there across from the bank, right? Whatever bank that is. Um, and the building's in rough shape. It has been for many years. And um, we finally moved programming activities out of there. And the South County Senior Center is currently um, providing services and holding activities at the uh, the parish hall at the uh, Holy Family uh, Church in Deerfield. Um, and recently, um, and until recently, staff uh, the staff of the South County Senior Center were still working in that older building in Deerfield, and they've since been moved out to a location in Sunderland, um, which I think was definitely the right move. Um, so we're, we have staff and um, operations split, but it's better that I think that the operations are out of that building and staff are out of that building. Um, so the, the obvious question is what's next um, for the South County Senior Center? Um, so what was it one, was it two years ago, one year ago? I think it was probably in between then. Yeah. Um, the South County Senior Center um, worked with uh, UMass Boston. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, the, the, the department, yeah, um, 
it, to do a um, senior needs assessment that was uh, yeah. distributed to um, residents, I think 50 and older, or 55 and older, it might've been 50 and older in the three towns. And it was a, a fund needs assessment as to, as to what folks would like um, to see from the South County Senior Center in, in terms of a wide range of things, services, like type of facility. Um, so that was completed and, and the report was provided to the, the Board of Oversight in the towns. And it was a presentation that was actually held at the, the town hall yeah. um, where uh, the folks from UMass Boston presented that. So that's where we are um, with the South yeah. County Senior Center. Um, and the question is, so how do we move forward? I think is the best question. It is the question we need to answer in terms of, um, I see two things in, in terms of, we need to follow up on the needs assessment in terms of how do we provide the services that people want that they identified in the needs assessment, right? How do we provide those? Um, as a, as a senior center. And then the second, probably more complicated question is what facility do we provide them in? Yeah. Um, so in terms of what's before us now, the state offers a, what's called an efficiency and regionalization grant through the community compact program um, that provides up to $200,000 um, to help communities, well, try to, uh, regionalized services or become more efficient in their operations. What's being what's being discussed here is, and I think Deerfield will be the lead community. Deerfield is the fiscal agent for the South County Senior Center as it's currently constituted. It would there would be two parts to the grant. The first would be um, let me talk about the second one because yeah. the second one's easier. Yeah, um, I think so. The second one would be sort of a continuation of the senior needs assessment. It would be um, the figuring out how we provide those services yeah. to meet the needs that people identify in the survey. And I, I think that's a good next step. I might characterize it a little bit different. Um, but I think that I, I think that's the right step in that direction. The, in terms of the facility or the, the future building, I think, that's where people probably disagree a little bit more yeah. as to how to move forward. Yeah. Um, there's history between the towns um, that sort of I, I was that influence sort of the relationships. I think. Um, <laughs> oh, you. So we have a that. we have a new board of oversight member, so some of those feelings may not be as <laughs> raw um, yeah. as they were in the past. <laughs> um, yeah. But so Deerfield want Deerfield's hope or wants are that um, the South County Senior Center, at least on a temporary basis, temporary meaning a term of years, temporary, I would imagine, we're not talking six months, would like to explore renovating the um, it's the old congregational church, right? That's yeah, next door. That, that's right that next to the school. Yeah. provided to the town. Um, my understanding is there's a current arrangement with the with Deerfield Academy to do some renovations in that building. And I know Deerfield has also appropriated money um, to make some improvements to that building as as a um, as a location for the senior center to go. But essentially moving the moving out of the holy name parish hall into the the congregational church or the former congregational church. Um, there's also been talk in, in so longer term, there's been some planning in Deerfield around their town buildings with their existing town hall, the old senior center, the congregational church. It's, it's there are different par parcels of land, but sort of the overall vision as to what they could do for a municipal building <coughs> campus, uh, I'll call it, right? And there was some desire planning that was taking place as to where the senior center could go in that scenario. Um, my issue, where I take issue with all of that is that, and I've told my colleagues this in the other towns and they're probably sick of me saying this, but 
the Board of Oversight is the governing body of the South County Senior Center. And under the intermunicipal agreement that exists between the towns, the Board of Oversight has really custody and control over where the Senior Center is located. Um, so while I, I, while I agree with sort of the second part of this, that we need to do a long range plan, I'm not so sold that I'm not sold on the first part of this, that, um, the congregational church is the right place to go because in my opinion, the board of oversight hasn't made that decision yet. Um, and that's not even a matter of opinion. That's a matter of fact. The Board of Oversight has not <laughs> taken that position that this would be a good place. And so it's, it's not really an opinion. <laughs> right. it's, it's just a fact that the Board of Oversight That's true. has not. And, and I, I am the member of the Board of Oversight. And as I look at this, and it says uh, part of the grant funds would be used to help the cost help with the cost of a feasibility study to determine what it would take to renovate an existing building in Deerfield for use by SCSC. Okay, that's South County Senior Center. And it would identify the work necessary to make the building accessible, assess energy efficiency, uh, extract the electric system, formulate how the space should be organized, uh, prevent, and, and so they mentioned a bunch of things. None of them mention, um, what I think is the main problem with the building, which is environmental. It is moldy as all hell up there. Mm -hmm. um, the, it's, it's got a dirt basement. Uh, it's not very well sealed off. It's the smell of mold permeates the whole church area where the, where the seats were. Um, and, and I thought that was bad enough when I went in. I could feel it in my lungs when I got there. I don't. Uh, and then when you go back into the, they weren't thinking of the senior center being in that big area church place. They were thinking of being in some of the back rooms and that other side sort of small gymnasium. Those were even worse. Mm -hmm. It is just damp and mold, damp and mold. And it's, just, it's not, it would be like going back into the school, the, uh, the old Deerfield school, the one that we, we just fled. Um, <laughs> so, so I, there's nothing in here about an environmental assessment. So if they if you really want to do this, they've got to get it. So that's the thing I mentioned at our last BOO meeting is that we really need an environmental assessment because of the, the mold and mildew problem. There's other structural problems with that church as well. You can't climb up the stairs to go to the upper floor and the steep is kind of It'd be. Um, so there's a lot of problems with that building. And if they do a feasibility study, it might be the conclusion is this is not feasible. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess with my first reading of this would be that it needs to also include uh, an environmental study for specifically, I guess, for mold and mildew, but I guess any environmental toxins and pollutants um, that we know the bill. I mean, maybe those problems can be solved and maybe there'll be a price tag that we can afford. And maybe maybe all of these things will, will come true. Um, and asking for some money to help figure out how much that would cost. I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to do. But I really, think, as a member mm -hmm. of the Board of Oversight, I would not do that unless I had some good environmental study done to determine whether that level of mold can really be taken care of and what would it take? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have to really, maybe have to tear out all the interior walls? You know, I mean, you can't really get it out of the walls <laughs> because it's, it's, it's there and it's, uh, it's not oppressive in the church room, but it's oppressive everywhere else. When I, when I hear yeah. mold mildew, I hear money. Yes. <laughs> a lot yeah. of money. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I, I, I think, so I guess I'm of, I'm of two minds uh, on this. I think if I were to really support it, we would need to say that there's got to be an environmental part. And it, and it may be that you know, we get this information. As it's too damn expensive to do it in that church building. They don't specify the church building here, though. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so the board, I'm trying to catch up here. The board of oversight has not yet taken the position that it should be in the church building. And are you saying that they have not yet taken that position because of the mold that will do and potential other problems? Um, that's certainly something that I. That's have, something that you. That I said I have not, and and um, I don't think the board has voted on. The board has not certainly has not voted on. Is are there other buildings available, or is this really what yeah. we're looking are at? Are there any other available? buildings in Deerfield that are really available? It depends a little on what they do. They're old. The the building that they're using now for town offices could be available some point in the future, mm -hmm. but I don't think they're talking about doing this assessment. Right, it's it's intended for the company, and that would be a, a very long term thing as part of Deerfield's whole. So this money is yeah, targeted. The vision of the bank. It would be yeah. years before yeah. that building opened up right. for a senior right. center use. What I what I like about it is the second part, which Brian says, like give us a give us a roadmap. The the first part in theory is is fine. It's more information, right? It's more information about what would it cost to bring this building up to spec. I just want to make sure that spec includes environmental mm -hmm. toxins. Uh, like the mold. I don't know if there's asbestos in the building. Um, do, do you want to bet? Yeah. And is, is there is there uh, is there a way to to really abate those? Right. I, I think an environmental expert <clears throat> is in there. So I, I think I did mention once. I think unless you've got the certificate from some really good environmental engineers, I I don't think I want to put a senior center in there. So, so this, this, grant, may, this may be a, this, so this might be a, a, a way of trying to figure out how do we make that building good enough to be our senior center. The grant, I'm sorry to uh, go to that city. The grant is specifically targeted at that for that building. It's not targeted for a general building for the senior center. It's that right. specific right. building. So because our letter of support that. doesn't say that. Uh, the the congregational church, the old congregational church, okay. but that's what it actually is in the in the grant they're applying for, right? This is a letter of support for a grant they're submitting. Well, I would right. certainly support uh, an environmental study as well. Yeah, this is a draft letter. We can just we can add balls in there. Yeah. To well, add. Um, uh, well, if if we say that parts of the grant funding will go towards it, that doesn't mean they put it in their application. Right. Right, this is a letter of support. Right. Yeah. But I think it should be mentioned that we get it on the record that we considered that and why would like to see yeah. it as part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, can we can we say we would sign that convention on them for the environmental assessment in the uh, scope of work? Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. So not against reusing old buildings. We just need to do it safely and. Right. Uh, you know, but, uh, for a long time, that was a reason a lot of people didn't go to the old senior center, was because it's in this moldy old building. <laughs> I know, right? And and it, old building, no, people don't care. Moldy old building, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. That that's can all the difference. Yeah. And I I see, in terms of moving the the senior center forward, I see the second part. Second part is. I mean, the yeah. second part I see is here's the needs. Here's what people want. Tell us what facility we need to provide these services in non-building specific. Yes. You know, it's a lot of times you, you see these studies that are done. It's it's a space needs assessment is essentially what it is. We, yeah. we, one was done for the, the, the town offices and town hall. There was plenty. It was, yeah. if you want to provide these services, this is the type of facility you need. In my opinion, that's really the next important step. And then you take that study the space needs assessment, and you can look at a building like the church and say, can we do this in here? Or else you're compromising, right? Okay. Or, right. or do we need okay. a new building because we need this much yeah, space? You're not even compromising, you're, yeah. you're flying blind yeah. because yeah. you may put into a building that's not at Right, so are we, right, what are we, what are we, what are we, what's leading us? Is it, we make the build, we use this building and then we do what we can with it? Or is it, these are, this is what we need for space and equipment and stuff to provide the services we want. And it, sorry, it doesn't fit in these buildings. So now we have to look 
you know, at yeah. doing something new, sort of yeah. what's what's driving the process. It's always compromising the edges once you have the needs and say, okay, right, maybe, maybe we don't need two of those, we could get by with one. But right. My yeah. fear is that it I'll I'll just say it. My fear is that is that the 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 three town group yeah. is gonna do the the latter. Uh yeah. That 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 the players that we're working with are gonna force the senior center into an existing space or try to at least yeah. the um, peg into the round hole. Yes. Right. Instead well, I, mean, of I think the senior center needs a way. like a three stall loading dock and a big windowless room. <laughs> I think that would be a great place for the senior center. And uh, we could shoehorn it in there, right? Could. What do they need sunshine for? They've had all the sunshine all their lives. No, I should <laughs> say I'm one of the seniors, so so. So is this oh, two, is this yeah. two hundred thousand dollar grant for the needs assessment or for the feasibility study of a specific building? For both. For both. I'm not sure. I haven't seen the the, the grant application for it. Okay. I wonder yeah. if you can just say the needs assessment. What would support because uh, without attaching it to any particular building yet. Yeah. Is that yeah. possible or is that not? I, I think it's it's possible to do that. What I'm what I'm not sure about is one of my one of my long-term concerns is that hypothetically we the South Carolina Senior Center moves it to the church, and then we lose the urgency to to find a, a home, right? right? The urgency to, to find something, a, a permanent place kind of wanes, and then it's <laughs> where we are again with yeah. an old building that's that's it may or may not be mostly sort of remediated, falls into disrepair again. Yeah. People may or may not be yeah. yeah. People are cursing us, who's ever sitting here in yeah. 15 years from now. Um, because it it doesn't say that it's a temporary home, you know, it's a temporary location for South Carolina Center. I, I don't um, think the people involved think it will be a temporary. Location. Well, that's my concern. Is, yes, I, I agree. I agree um, with your concern. Well, is there a way for us to um I mean the, do they like need this in tomorrow or something? Uh they would they requested this program by November 7th. And our so next meeting our next is meeting. November 8th. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I guess I, I I would want to see that, and I would I wouldn't mind making a vote contingent or having a really brief meeting because we can do it by Zoom mm -hmm. uh, to take care of this item in time for their submission. If we could actually see the breakdown of the budget of the application and see. That uh, environmental mitigation is a part of it. It's not you know, well, a why part are of this draft letter. To a specific building, if your concern is that they're going to move into that specific building and then we're going to lose the urgency. Am I not following? My overall that's my overall concern. Yeah. So why are um, we still attaching it to a specific building? Because okay. that's I guess that's Deerfield's request is to is to look yeah. at the church. For a quote unquote non permanent solution, right? right. Whole, the, <clears throat> holy, the, the arrangement with Holy Name is, isn't intended to last, you know, for years. Um, or, it's the, or it's a matter of years, it's not going to be 20 years, it's not going to be 30 years, but right. It's so we need to transition. How I would, how I would see it is well, they're in Holy Name right now, there's a transitional space. Right. Yeah. In my yeah. mind, the church and possibly. And then there's a transitional space that, that they're using while while the long-term permanent solution right. is developed and um in my right. opinion, most likely constructed. Um, right. So <clears throat> it just just my opinion is that I would support the church as that transitional space, but I'm worried that transitional space would right. creep into I wouldn't yeah. tie it to a specific building if there was an alternative, but at this point we've got no there's a, yeah, there are no other 
and build it under consideration. Well, perhaps have a word, we have a like Joe said, we have a windowless room. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps yeah. the word temporary or transitional. Yeah, you can't park your bus right and, and, and the word feasible. Yeah, yeah. So I went back and forth on including that, and yeah, yeah. I think the counter argument is: does it weaken the grant? If you're saying we're only going to use this for a yeah. period of a year or two, does it weaken right. the application? I don't know. Well, well, I, I guess think you build up the part of the grant that says we're looking at a needs assessment, and while we do that, we have to hang out somewhere, so we're hanging out here. Well, I don't think the grant is saying we're going to hang out here. It's, it's a feasibility study. It might be that feasibility comes back because you need five million dollars mm -hmm. to make this church right. Okay. And we'll never get five million dollars. So that's the end of putting it in the church. So a feasibility study doesn't necessarily say, yes, you can do this. We're, lo and we're locking down here. here. Well, it'll say, here's how you can do here's it. How it'll you cost can do you five it. million dollars, but you can do it. Yeah, and I and I just made up five million. Right, yeah, no, or seven, maybe or... it's ten million. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I mean, and our town going... hall was in the end what up two million, two point something, one point eight, one point nine. Yeah, it was, it was that, and, and that building wasn't in really too bad shape. Yeah, uh, this church is in substantially poor condition. I mean, the the town hall was structurally intact, and this. So is the fee, I'm sorry to keep yeah, hammering on yeah. this, but is the feasibility study possibly to convince some folks that well, church is not a good place? I don't believe so. I, I was going to say, if, if, if I were asking for the feasibility study, then maybe yes, but it might be that the people who are asking for the feasibility study want the answer to be yes. My understanding but is that said, there are already arrangements with DA to rent, do renovations, and they've also appropriated money to do renovations. Yeah, but so, those renovations may not. This is a little gossip for the horse kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to regional cooperation. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. 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 So, so I guess I, I would I would really be interested in environmental. Hazards mitigation, specifically the mold and any other <laughs> toxic materials that are in the building. Um, that that has to get that has to be a part of the feasibility study. Can can I mean, you walk through what the procedures and power and authority there are? The is that the committee that makes policy, but they don't have any. Appropriation power. Right. They have to go back to the towns. Yeah. What What are the voting uh, weights? It's equal. It's, yeah, it's, it's a equal. three member board of oversight. Yeah, one vote. One vote. One town. Okay. So it's not. It's not, not by population, yeah. like school. Right. It, oh, a lot of regional. I'll use schools. Yeah. There's usually big fish. Mm -hmm. and it's usually small fish. Right. And big fish don't like to hear what the small fish have to say sometimes. Right. Sometimes. Um, so uh, nobody's ever said that it's, you know, this is the way we're going to do it or we're going to leave, but that's an option um, for any of the three participants. So, okay, I just, I just, want, I just want to know what, what, what the okay. procedures were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There, but but yeah. that, yeah. There's a say, say the, you know, the church was approved by the committee, then even so, they would still have to come back to the individual towns to appropriate the money to do yeah. the work. Um, or and, raise it with grants or, or, like or whatever. Right. Okay. Yeah. So or, yeah, that's but, or, 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 so, for instance, in the in the the old senior center, the one that yes. was out of, it was a town of Deerfield building. The South, South County Senior Center paid for maintenance, uh, but didn't pay for any of the uh, well, and they right. renovated. So maybe that's <laughs> one of the problems. Yeah, but, 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 yeah. but they paid, they paid for utilities. They yeah, paid but, but but 
we're talking renovations or new building being very big ticket items, yeah. not not utilities or there there has the not way. been a current ask to Waitley or Sunderland to pay for improvements to the congregational church here, the old congregational church here. The dear God has appropriated money. So are they still regional Deerfields? Or are they yeah, moving it's... ahead independently? Well, they own the building, so they want to they know they need to get the building approved. Okay. I don't know that Deerfield Academy will do call it from the our town halls price tag was two million. I don't know that Deerfield Academy will do two million dollars worth of renovations for them. Yeah, I, I don't know, understand that relationship very well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, is that uh, is two million really going to do it? Um, you know, so so part of me says, yeah, we need a feasibility study on that building so we can like get some not you know so you know not somebody from the town of Deerfield saying what could happen. I want some some third party. Uninterested, but not interested enough to do the work. I guess. Facts <laughs> to discuss. Someone, to, yeah. So, 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 someone to kind of set the the ground rules. I don't know who they have in mind to do the feasibility study. If that will be biased or not, okay. I would imagine. You know, anybody doing an honest job is going to have a, a you know a, a report that people are going to like. There. There's going to be a huge price tag to make that place environmentally. Well, would that have would the hiring of that these the person who do the study have to go before your committee? I don't to to, to approve such a person. Yeah, I. You know, I, I I I don't. Um, yeah, I don't know. I doubt it. I don't think it would be if they're really the it's really a town of Deerfield building. But the board of oversight does get to decide where our senior center. Is okay. That's. <clears throat> Am I hearing that the board would would provide the letter of support if the grant included the environmental assessment? Yes, and, and I guess that we would also like to see the budget how the money is distributed between the feasibility study and uh, the needs assessment and the needs assessment. And I think it's, yeah. I can ask them to wait the other day. Yeah. I don't think it's due on the evening. The, the long term master plan um, is uh, the way it's written in this letter. But yeah. And I think there's a board of oversight meeting on the second. Second? Yeah, November 2nd. There will likely be a discussion of this. Well, you probably won't be comfortable to vote on. It would probably go so far as to say we would support the feasibility study now. We're going into the church. Right. We might yeah, we might be able to say we, we support the feasibility study, but I would I would be understanding on on tape, you know, in a recorded media, um, that it that this this is not a decision to move this out from the senior center to that location. It's agreement to to investigate whether this can be done and include an environmental assessment, uh, specifically of the mold and any other toxic materials. Yep. Okay. Yes. So we, um, we're we putting this letter on the shelf then for the moment. Yeah, and I'll see if they can, this board meets next on the aid. And the I can see if they can meet yeah. the night. I don't think I think they can. Okay. I think it was preferred by the seventh, but it's just attaching it in pending. So yeah. And it would be good if, and if we do have to have a meeting, I'd like it to be out to the Board of Oversight right. as a chance to discuss it. Okay. Okay, our next meeting is the when is the board's next meeting? Uh, the second. Okay. Is there anything more on this? I think we're kind of talked down. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, under new business, we have one more item that to discuss holding a special town meeting in November. 
And he sent us a few dates. Have we narrowed it down to one now? I think everyone is available on November 29th. We'll okay. do it at 7 30. We can do it after the board meeting. Yep. Okay. 29th. Oh, good. It's already on my calendar. Okay. Uh, the moderator and tablet are available. Okay. Um, so that would be Tuesday. And uh, Tuesday evening um, at the hall, at town hall, to the elementary school. Um, obviously, this oh. is down. I don't know that we can. If it's a standard special town meeting, I don't know if we need the elementary school. Yeah, I don't think so. How big are they usually? Last time, um, I think it was 13. Yeah, it's it's really 10 to 20 is okay. a big one. Okay. Sometimes there's, a, there's even fewer than that. <laughs> That one during the, the one at the beginning of COVID, I think, was four people. Four people yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this town doesn't, unlike other towns, doesn't have any forum for. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, so I mean, you got your moderator and your town clerk. You got. Oh, well, I think that's going to just going to say that. And the clerk is a town resident. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, when I got to 13, I concluded that was like more than a quarter. And luckily, so many of our employees. We, we, we made town. Brian a honorary town resident. Right, yeah, yeah, it doesn't get the vote done. I can only speak with permission. Right. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, do you need us to vote? Do you need a motion and a vote to? Um, no, so I'll prepare the uh, special town meeting agenda and then we'll we'll sign that. We'll, okay. I'll send it out and then the board's gonna review it. We'll sign it on the, approve okay. it on the 8th. Okay. You got a note to put the police cruiser on. Yeah, um, I think the police cruiser on there. Um, there's a couple other house. house there, yeah, yeah. There, yeah, it's on a list of, of things. There's some. Is it CPA? Yeah, CPA yeah, has, has CPA. the public hearing for the the uh, church window restoration. Yeah. Okay. There's many things. All right. So that'll be our next uh, agenda. Yep. Great. Okay. Uh, turn it over to you for town administrator updates. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the water department is is hoping that um, Monday, October thirty first, will be the date when they switch over. Uh -huh. um, when they switch on the pumping station, and um, there's outreach happening currently to the all the the current customers of the water district who will have their water shut off. It's estimated probably four to six hours. Um, mm -hmm. That will allow the um, the mains to be flushed. Okay. Uh, so the water flow, any residual yeah. sediments and things like that, that's in the current uh, the system will get flushed out. Mm -hmm. um, Wayne did mention that you know during that process there could be some discoloration, um, and mm -hmm. there could be some sediment that that might come out of people's faucets. He just recommends that they just run it. You know, run their faucets um, for a minute or two until the water clears up. But it's not that the water coming in is yeah. dirty or anything. It's just trying to get the years and years of sediment to off out. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's going to happen on thirty first. The thirty first. Okay. Um, is it going to be like a ceremony or anything? Celebration? Not that I know of. Um, I haven't asked them yeah. that specific. Well, maybe question. people can just walk, you know, from house to house and give each other candy. Candy, but <laughs> also RFPs. In our RFPs, yes. 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 Yeah. Um, uh, Haydenville Road reconstruction project. We have a, a project meeting tomorrow. Um, that that's on still on track for that's the full depth reconstruction of Haydenville Road. Um, that's still on track for federal funding and construction in federal fiscal year uh, 2025. Mm -hmm. um, so part of our, our next course will be here on, on trying to um, we'll do title searches and we'll try to get all the right away issues um, taken care of so that we have mm -hmm. all the land that's needed to uh, do the project or the easements that are needed to do the project. Um, and is, is there any progress on that land swap? Um, not at the moment. We were still in discussions with, with the city of Northampton. Um, they weren't too keen on the ones that we had proposed. Mm -hmm. um, the argument being that 
well, the land that they are holding is for watershed for public water supply purposes. So the land that provided in mitigation should also be for public water supply purposes. Um, so they want, they were hoping to have the land offset um, when what's called their zone A, um, it's sort of the water recharge area around the reservoir, so the different zones, zone A is the one that's immediately around the reservoir. Um, they were hoping that the town could acquire some land. Um, in, in Northampton, it's been trying to acquire a lot of land around um, the reservoir in uh, West Whaley. Um, so they asked if some property availability there that would need to do some outreach on. Um, so presumably it's not the, uh, land that we own right it's now. Not but it's not land that we own. Right. In past, they're, they're past, Northampton's past efforts to um, purchase that land were not successful. And I expect them, I expect any outreach that we do to play would be not successful. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully we can find a practical solution. Yeah. I'm trying to be nice about it. Okay. A practical solution to the hey, problem. Hey, if anybody can do it, yes, because. No, no, maybe, I mean, the part about being nice. Oh, that could be nice, yeah. <laughs> but there are there's certainly mutual benefits to the project for both parties involved. Yeah. And trying to leverage, you know, certain situations to get, you know, right. to get benefits that might go above and beyond, beyond what's required. <laughs> I'm trying to be very nice about this. Yeah. Um I think we just need to find a practical solution to the problem because there's benefits to both both parties involved for sure. In terms of water quality and protection of drinking water, and for us in terms of road maintenance. So it'll get done. Um, the last one I have here is town office um, build out. Um, so the select board awarded the, the contract to union, the bid to union office superiors, and we're working on um, they were picking some fabrics and colors indoors and things like that. Um, okay. that they're going to lock up and we'll uh, replace that order. Uh, do you remember how, how long the turnaround was? Any chance? Uh, 30, 60? Yeah, I think it was pretty quick. Like three weeks. Um, so, they could, friendly. so they could turn that around pretty quick once we, once we decide okay. uh, what it would look like. So that's going yeah. forward. Um, Keith is still working with. Uh, uh, Terry Reynolds was the engineer at the for the OD Park, yeah, OD Fields parking lot to try to figure out some cost savings okay. uh, there. As we found out, the cost of permeable pavement is yeah. significantly higher, and, and really the cost of any asphalt right now is really high. Uh, so they're working on that still. Um, we had the uh, the complete streets uh, open house at the town hall. Oh, yeah. um, Maybe six people showed up, I think. Um, maybe a couple of the, the neighbors, the debutters of the project showed up and had some conversations, but nothing nothing was uh, alarming to us that you know that would require changes to the project. So that's about it. Okay. All righty. Um, any items are anticipated? Here that I move to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We adjourned. Oh.